Guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mateo and we're going to go over what happened in the market today. So let's just get started and make this simple, right? Um, overall today, this is the SPY S&P 500. Uh, the ticker is SPY. It tracks the S&P 500. It's what I usually trade along with QQQ and then also Nvidia, Tesla, whatever's moving that moves with the direction of the market, I will trade. So right now today, I wanna to show you what happened actually yesterday. So we had this sell off, here's a daily chart. Yesterday we went up and tapped um, 389 on SPY. Right now it's 374. So that's pretty wild spread out moves, right? 389 and now we're at 374. So that's more than a $10 move, right? That's like a $15 move in just the span of a few hours because that happened after two o'clock yesterday and the market closed at 4 p.m. Eastern time every day. So um, this is all dealing with an Eastern time, if you were wondering, um, on the East Coast. So uh, all my charts and, and basically uh, time zone is Eastern time. All right, so this morning, where did we start? All right, we, we did a little uh, jump. So we came down, we hit 374, popped back up, hit 376. 44 and that was the high up, up until the end of the day where we got some big buying and big selling and What I want to point out today is look at the close, right? We had we went from 377.31 to 374.17 that is not good when we close um, When we just drop off at the close, it's a lot of selling pressure and a decent amount of volume. I've seen more um yeah, actually that's a lot of volume. So yeah, 3.7 million shares traded within the last five minutes and it's usually pretty high like that. Usually two million so that the, the volume has come back. People are back from vacation, back from summer vacation and they're in front of the charts or they're you know getting their algorithms all set up and, and whatnot. So there's a lot more action in the market, a lot more volume. Um, so overall picture, look at the summer lows, right? We did this doji uh, here in the summer, which is like a candlestick that has this little box and then two wicks on the top. It's like an indecision candle, like, hey, we don't know where the next one's gonna be um, after that one. And so then we kind of rallied up from there in, in June. And look, we're about to go and test that. Like I mentioned multiple times on this YouTube channel, is that, hey, we're probably gonna go test the summer lows. Here it is, here's the test. I mean, DIA uh, is basically five bucks from it. Let's just measure this real quick. 373.41, uh, right, 44 today. Um, where, where's the low taken out? 362, come on, 10 more bucks. We did 15 in, two, in like six hours, right? So I'm not saying that's gonna happen right away. Um, there might be some more up action, so a bounce before that happens, but it's pretty much inevitable and then maybe go lower from there. So here's uh, DIA, look, 396.65, we hit today a low of 399.89. So look at that, we, we broke 300 on, on the Dow Jones, DIA ETF. So that says we're you know four bucks away um, from the ultra low of the summer on DIA. And on DIA, just yesterday we went from 309.44 to 302. So you tell me, right, is that happening? Uh, yeah, but a lot of people will tell you it's not gonna happen and then you just kind of laugh in their face. So uh, It's happening. <clears throat> the summer lows are gonna get taken out. <clears throat> it might not happen tomorrow Tomorrow Friday actually might be a rally day because there's so much selling pressure and we're so oversold and we're so reset in the area of below um, 20 RSI that we could pop up and do a bounce um, just because that's just how algorithms work people think hey things are cheap let me buy some um, so let's see we we'll probably rally tomorrow but uh, not a good not a good ending to the day I didn't expect I expected some rough and tough action in the day at the end here but I mean to just sell off like three or four three or four dollars on spy like that um, with these two big red candles that, that just shows some real negativity and it tried to go take out the lows of the day didn't make it if it did that if it closed at the lows that would be a whole new whole new bearishness but it kind of kept uh, the middle of that um, tweezer there and you can see here this is a trade I saw I didn't take but look here's a tweezer a red and a white candle next to each other outside of a lower Bollinger Band and then it got retested lower in the day with a red hammer candle where it has a wick and then a thick body like that and then it kept going up this is something you'll see a lot on a five minute chart 13 minute chart 15 minute chart whatever chart 
time frame you want to use, you will see this action. Now, what does this mean? If you see a tweezer bottom outside the band, it usually means it goes band to band. And look, it did. And then it ended in a tweezer top, hit the mid band, jump back to it. So this is some wild action, but usually you see um, a tweezer there, but there wasn't really a confirmation. And then like this was the kind of the confirmation candle here, but you got an entry even half, like look at the half candle body. You got an entry to enter on that tweezer half 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes after it happened. So this happens a lot. So I wanna show you that pattern. Tweezer bottom outside the lower bands on a five minute chart and it gets retested either the bottom of the candle, like the body where it gets thick right here, right there, or the middle of it and it did. So right here could have been your buy point because Stoke was working its way from 20 reset to 80 reset. And then um, MACD was crossed at that, at that time, right? It did a little double cross, but it did cross. So that was your retest in, or you could get in right here and ride it up to the top band or the moving average, which it did. And then we got super bearish on that perfect tweezer top, hit the lower band instead of the bottom band. It always goes to a band, might only go to middle, might go to top or bottom. And then we rally back up. So I just wanna kinda of show you that what I saw today. Um, any questions, please comment down below. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see what happens from here. We might bounce tomorrow on Friday, September 23rd, before we go lower the last week of September. Could also be a bounce, but the first week of October is most likely gonna slice through the summer low. So let's see what happens here. Um, just stay active on the charts and look at it. Even if you work during the day, um, you can't see the charts all day. Uh, come home, look at the daily chart, the 233 chart. Um, you know, here's the daily chart. It's really important, right? You wouldn't buy a stock trying to go up, right? If the daily chart's pointing down like this. You want to catch it on the uptrend, something like this, something like this, something like this, right? You want to get from stoke from low, close to 20 or below, and then go to above 80. Um, if it's a short term trade, <clears throat> if it's a long term trade, check out my video on the how when to buy long-term options. I think that's really important. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So thanks so much guys and we will stay in touch. So peace.